if the Bible says we are more than conquerors through Christ that strengthens us, it means there is something to conquer. If the Bible says that we have overcome them, it means there is something to overcome. Now, if the Bible says that God has given us the victory, it means there is a battle to fight. It means that we came to this world to overcome something. It means God, if he will reward those who overcame, it means like this world is like a testing ground to see whether we will believe God and stand by his word to overcome our adversaries. Good morning. You are welcome to I Prevail with Joseph Adenoga, the daily broadcast that God put in my mouth to encourage you, to inspire you, to motivate you, and to bless you so that you can prevail over whatever the enemy may throw at you in life. You are born to prevail. You are born to overcome. You are born to win. This morning, as you hear these words of encouragement, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord open you to more understanding. May the Lord empower you and give you the grace and the ability to look at your problem and deal with it without fear. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You see, you must understand that there is a reason we are here. That reason is not to fail at all. Failure is never part of God's agenda for sending any one of us here. But I found out in my short years on on earth that it seems as if we are here to overcome something. Everyone has got what is battling with. Some they fail to 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 they fail to to cap that thing. They they fail to win that battle, and so they die. Some. They fail in the major battle. Every one of us have a major battle that we have come to this world to overcome and to win. That's why Ephesians chapter 6 tells us we are fighting not against flesh and blood. There are things that we came here to overcome. And if we don't overcome, it's a pity. It's a pity not because we are weak but because maybe we don't know what to do, and that is why we failed. We must know what to do. But you cannot know what to do until you first of all know that it is the will of God for you to overcome. You are here to overcome that problem. Maybe there is a disease, a lifelong disease. You see, it's sometimes when we look at it, we don't understand everything. No matter how smart you are, no matter how much of a prophet you may think you are, you cannot know everything about life. There are some things that are shrouded in mystery. For instance, how can you explain a man that was born blind? Jesus Christ met that man that was born blind. And the disciples asked him, look, our Lord... What went wrong? What is happening here? Is it this man or his parents that sinned against God, that God got so much angry that this man was born blind? You see, these are mysteries of life that no one can understand because the answer of Jesus brought more confusion. The answer of Jesus is, this man did not sin. His parents did not sin. Wow. If he did not sin and his parents did not sin, why then was he born blind? And further answer came. Jesus said, so that this man's condition may glorify God. I want this. He was born blind so that he can glorify God in this condition. Can you see? He was born blind so that he can see, and that seeing will bring glory to God. He was born blind so that he can overcome blindness. He was born blind so that he can defeat blindness in the name of Jesus. He was born blind so that he can meet Jesus who will empower him to overcome the problem of blindness. 
He was born blind to show people that God can deal with blindness. He was born blind so that everybody can know that nothing is impossible for God. Because by the time Jesus healed him, it drove home the point that nothing indeed is impossible. I don't know what you are going through, but there is a reason. If you can stand by the word of God, if you can stand by faith and not give up, you may say to me, but pastor, it's getting worse every day. Yes, it may get worse every day, but you need to stand your ground. There is nowhere in the Bible where you are promised that things will not happen to you. Things do happen. They happened to our Lord Jesus Christ himself. There was a time when he was going to face the cross. He prayed with great sweat of blood. It was an agonizing time for Jesus. You see, I don't know what you are going through, but don't lose hope. I don't know how painful it is, but stay on track with your God. I don't know how shameful it may look, but you see, if you can stand your ground in faith and keep believing, it will soon come to pass. The Bible says, and it shall come to pass. What you are going through shall come to pass. The pain shall come to pass. The debt you are owing now shall come to pass. The fact that there is no job shall come to pass. It shall be a past tense. Then you're going to say, I remember when I didn't have a job. I remember when I could not pay my house rent. I remember when there was no food on the table. I remember. You're going to remember these trying times. Only if you hold on. One of the reasons why you came is to face this. You are facing this challenge. Some people, they've had so many partners. At the end, it's always coming to a breakup. Maybe it's one of the things God wants you to face. Yes, you have tried to live a good life with a partner, but it always comes to an abrupt end. It always come to a sad end and is bothering you. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. You can do this. This may be the thing that God wants you to rise up and win. You must rise up. You must win this. You must overcome this. The Bible says you are of God, little children, and you have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. There is something greater. There is somebody greater and is on the inside of you. You see, when the Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2, that looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, some people think that they're going to look at him on the cross. He's no longer on the cross. Don't look at the cross. Some people say, well, let's go to the grave of Jesus. No, 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 no. He's no longer in the grave. Don't go looking for Jesus in the grave. They say, okay, now Jesus has gone to heaven. Yes, he has gone to heaven, but he's in heaven, but not just in heaven right now. He's right there in your heart. Because this is what he said in Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. I stand at the door of your heart and I knock. If you can hear my voice, open the door. I'm going to come in to you. That's why the Bible says Christ in you, the hope of glory. You look unto Jesus from the inside of you. He's in you. And that's why I used to say, there's no need running elter-skelter from place to place. Christ, the healer, is in you. The spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is in you. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. You are the house of God. You are the address of God. God lives inside you. 
And if you know this, then you're going to know that if Jesus truly raised the dead and he is inside you, then there is nothing that is dead in your life that the Jesus inside you cannot raise up. Then you're going to know whatever has failed in your life, the Jesus of success who made the success of the world is inside you. There is nothing that has failed that he cannot turn around and bring to Sussex. When you understand this, you are not you are not moved. When you understand this, you are not disturbed. When you understand this, you are not unhappy. You know that there may be pain, but you know that there is someone on the inside of me. He is greater. He is bigger. He can do this through me. Then you can say, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me because he's on the inside of me. I want you to hear this, somebody. I want you to understand this. I want you to know that this problem is permitted not to kill you, not to maim you, not to destroy you, but to give glory to God so that you can rise out of this problem and become, you know, an example to the believers that God can do it because he did it for me. God allow you to pass through it so that you can be a testimony and say, look, listen, wait a minute. If this is happening to you, it has happened to me and God helped me. He's going to help you. That's why it's happening to you. Take it and look on the inside. Solution is very close. Solution is not outside of you. Solution is on the inside of you for the simple reason and fact that Jesus is on the inside of you. For the simple fact that the Holy Ghost that created the heavens and the earth is on the inside of you. The Spirit of God is inside you. Everything was created by that Spirit and that Spirit is inside you. And if it's not there, why don't you give your life to Jesus right now? Why don't you bow your head and, and surrender your life and invite Jesus into your life as your Lord and Savior. Then Jesus will come in. The Holy Spirit will come in. Begin to dwell on the inside of you. You're going to be another person. You're going to be a new creature. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ is a new creation, all things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. This is the word this morning, and today is Sunday. Remember, you are able to hear this because of the partners of I Prevail. God bless our partners. Please, as today is Sunday, make sure you go to church. Find a Bible-believing church around you and go. And if you are around Bethlehem or you are around here in Springs, Johannesburg, find your way to the prevailing church, and God will bless you as you do that. Thank you very much for listening to the sound of my voice. It is well with your soul. This is your brother, your friend, your pastor, Joseph Adenuga, signing out this morning, saying to you, be blessed and remain blessed.